I was, I was pretty heartbroken, to be honest. Um, and to think that I'm sat here <laughs> filming with Look Fantastic when six years ago, like, I literally couldn't even put my scar on, it's a little bit wild. Like, he's nuts. <laughs> And I don't really allow myself to um, reflect very often because this happens and I cry. Um, but it is wild when you think about how far I've actually come. Hi. <laughs> so I have a condition called spinal muscular atrophy type two, um, which Boiled down essentially means I am incredibly weak. So um, people often say, oh, she's paralyzed. I'm not paralyzed, I have all feeling. Everything is in all working order. I just am extremely weak. So it's easier to tell you the things that I can do for myself rather than list everything that I can't do. Um, so I can just about feed myself with the use of my bionic arm. Um, I can use my mobile phone, again, with the bionic arm. As I'm sat right now, I cannot lift my arms off my lap. Um, and I can do my own makeup, like elements of my own makeup. SMA type 1, um, sadly, <laughs> results in infant death. It was pretty much a death sentence in the past. Um, but due to new treatments, um, this is no longer quite so scary, so that's absolutely incredible. Um, type two is what I've got. Um, so I was diagnosed really young, um, and there's type three, which is called adult onset. Um, and you could just be a, an average person walking around doing your thing, and then one day you start losing functions. So I was diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy when I was 18 months old. Um, my mom and dad knew nothing about it um, at all. And when I was a baby, I wasn't crawling. I wasn't doing the things that, in inverted commas, normal babies should do. Um, so they took me to the doctors and the doctor actually said, don't worry, she's just a lazy baby. She'll get round to it eventually. I'm still waiting, doc. Like, I am literally still waiting. Um, so that never happened. And I had a muscle biopsy. And that's when I was diagnosed with SMA type 2. My school life was pretty mundane, to be honest. I went to a mainstream school. My parents were very adamant on raising me as a normal child because that's what I was to them. Um, so I was in a mainstream school and the school made lots of adaptions for me. My primary school actually even put a lift in um, so that I could get upstairs. Um, they were great and secondary school was great as well. They had a special education department. So yeah, school was probably very mundane to be honest. <laughs> when I was little, I was obsessed with fashion. So I would spend hours upon hours just drawing women in certain clothes and shoes and just fashion was everything. I really, really want to be a, like a fashion designer. However, when I was in secondary school, I actually lost the use of my right hand practically like overnight. Um, so I'd gone from being able to draw and write and do what I loved to now I can't even sign my own name on a birthday card anymore. Um, moon pig make a lot of money out of me, let's put it that way. When I lost the ability to draw, um, I, was <laughs> I was pretty heartbroken, to be honest. Um, I've never really reflected on how I felt about it. That was a large chapter of my life because I really would spend hours and hours drawing. It was my one creative outlet. You know, I can't go to the playground and play on the swings. I can't play football. Um, it was like my passion, I loved art. I was planning to do double art at school, I did double art, sorry. Um, and I was planning to do like design, um, like textiles, um, and that's kind of what I wanted to do. But then in the middle of my uh, GCSEs, that's when my hand 
effectively just died on me. Uh, so I had to rethink things. Yeah, it was, it was big. Um, but you know, you live and learn and you move on, you adapt. It's taken me a while to adapt, but um, yeah. Spinal muscular atrophy is a progressive condition in that you do get weaker as you get older, but I am actually trialling a new drug at the moment. I'm probably going to cry. Um, I'm trialling a new drug called Ristaplan at the moment, which is currently an early access to medicine scheme. So it's not being rolled out to everybody yet, but it is designed with hopefully halting the progression of my disability. So hopefully I shouldn't get any weaker. Um, they don't really know much about it yet, but I'm experiencing like amazing things with it. I'm, I'm feeling more stamina, I'm feeling stronger, I'm holding my head up better. Um, it's, it's intense. So yeah, from what was once quite concerning that when I, if I hit my 50s, I might be really weak and I might lose even more functions. Now, hopefully that is a thing of the past. <laughs> So I saw a friend using what I fondly term as the bionic arm um, on Facebook. And I was just casually scrolling through and she was putting eyeliner on using this bionic arm. And I was like, right, how the hell do I get one of them for myself? Because I hadn't done my eyeliner in many, many moons, let me tell you, like a long time. And I crowdfunded for it and it worked. And I'm now the proud owner of a bionic arm. <laughs> When I crowdfunded, I expected to be waiting weeks, months, because, you know, money's hard to come by and you're expecting complete strangers to help you raise money. Honestly, when I was watching the totals go up and up and up, I literally just spent a week solid crying, literally crying, like, it's, just, it's making my hair stand on end talking about it. Just the utter generosity of people that owe you absolutely nothing but they'd read why I wanted the arm and they felt moved enough to, like, just through the generosity of absolute strangers, I raised, like, £6,000 in less than a week. They don't need to do that for you, but they wanted to help, and it helps unbelievably, so... Using the arm, I think, made me look at obstacles in a different way. So I tried different positions with my seat in, like resting my elbows on things, and I just got a bit creative. And that's actually the way that I now do my own makeup. Um, and to think that I'm sat here <laughs> filming with Look Fantastic when six years ago, like I literally couldn't even put my scar on, it's a little bit wild. Like, he's nuts. <laughs> And I don't really allow myself to um, reflect very often because this happens and I cry. Um, but it is wild when you think about how far I've actually come. When I first left uni, I did think that getting into fashion was completely like off the cards. I didn't really know how to go about it. Like, you don't just answer job adverts of being like a fashion stylist, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a, bit, it's a bit challenging to get into, but I had a friend at the time that worked on Gox Fashion Fix and she managed to get me some like work experience working on um, like the styling department, like working in the wardrobe. I just kind of had a fire lit under my ass after that and I was like, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do it, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. I just started contacting photographers and being like, can I test with you? Um, I want to do fashion styling and I did and I just landed on my feet, which is, I get the pun there that I've literally just made. Um, but I did, and it was incredible. Like, I absolutely loved it. But unfortunately, it just became like a really expensive hobby um, rather than paying me bills. Around that time, I got the bionic arm. I learned to do my makeup. Um, and I just started putting stuff on Instagram. Like, it wasn't, a, I didn't wake up one morning and say, right, I'm going to be an influencer. Like, you can't do that. It's just not possible. 
Um, I just put stuff on the internet and it just spiraled. My Instagram really was um, like a diary for my personal growth, if you will. Um, I wasn't putting it out there for everyone to see. I was just documenting my own progress because when I tell you that I literally started at the beginning, like I couldn't apply mascara. I had not done it for years. Like I was in my late 20s when I started doing all this. So it was just a journal of my own progress. Um, but then the one thing that escalated things was I got shared by Anastasia Beverly Hills and their page is known for, obviously it's a makeup account. Their page is known for headshots, it's beauty shots, it's makeup. But she actually shared a full length photo of me. This was years ago, and I feel like times are moving on now. Seeing a disabled person on a makeup account was rare. So I went from like a couple of hundred followers to like 10, 20,000 overnight, like 20,000 followers. So I woke up the next morning, had like a meltdown, tears, everything was like, oh my God, what do I do with this newfound fame? I'm joking, I didn't think I was famous. But I just thought this is like wild, like people are following me for my little old makeup. So it just inspired me to just keep posting it because why not? People are following you, so <laughs> may as well. I definitely didn't think that what I'm doing now, which is literally posting pictures to a social media website, would be a viable career. Like when I tell you I never expected this to be a thing, I'm not just being coy and like humble. Like I literally didn't. Like it's amazing that it's because I can physically do it. I can do it, I've got control of everything. Like, I couldn't do this without the girls at all. Oh my God, here we go. <laughs> I couldn't do this without the girls that support me. The team of carers that I have enable me to do absolutely everything that I do. And they listen to my every <laughs> irrational whim and request and they just, help me so passionately so what you see like on social media i have got full input like that's all me it's my own little world so for that to be a viable source of income that is paying my rent and my life is mind-blowing like i can't actually believe that i'm doing it <laughs> It is the support of absolute strangers that has pushed me to do 90% of what I do. I always was like, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. And now I'm like, just go on, just try it. Just, just go on. And I've, I've done these things. And then you put it up on the internet and these people go wild for it. People are so lovely and supportive and it's just the nicest feeling. I used to hide myself away quite a lot. Um, I used to not want to be seen any more than I clearly already am. And then once I embraced that, I was just like, makeup is just creativity and freedom and art for me. I definitely think we need more awareness of just generally the intricacies of disabled life. I'm quite adamant that I'm not gonna be somebody that wears my disability as like a badge of honor or my identity because I'm far more than that, however, if I can just open somebody's eyes to just, like I said, the intricacies of what life entails. You know, we throw the words around like normal and I mean, now I've even used it several times. Like it, nothing's normal, like what is normal? <laughs> like this is normal to me. This is normal to me. I, I think we just need to be a little bit more aware of what's going on past the end of our own noses um, and just be aware that people live life in such different, varied, amazing, mind-blowing ways. Just look and observe and it's all there for us to see.